All right, so we're diving into some pretty cool AI stuff today. Mm. Um, you sent over a bunch of articles and press releases all about Google DeepMind's Gemini 2.0 straight from their website. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. So imagine needing to send an email, uh -huh. create like the perfect image to go with it, okay, and book your travel arrangements all at the same time. Right. That's the kind of future Gemini 2.0 was hinting at. Yeah, you know what's really interesting here is how Gemini 2.0 is fundamentally different from what we've seen before. Oh, okay. It's not just about understanding language or creating images anymore. Yeah. It's about taking action, being proactive. Okay. Google DentMind is calling this the agented era, and it's a pretty big leap. Okay, I'm yeah. intrigued. So it's like yeah. moving from a calculator that can just crunch numbers to one that can actually understand your instructions and get things done in the real world. Exactly. Think of it as a shift from a smart assistant uh -huh. to more like a partner who can anticipate your needs and act on them. Wow. It's about AI that can understand complex instructions. Uh -huh. Use tools like your email or a booking website uh -huh. and even operate in real time. Hold on, real time. What does that even look like? Imagine you're having a conversation with the AI. Okay. And you mentioned you're thinking about taking a trip. Okay. Gemini 2.0 could simultaneously search for flights, mm -hmm. compare prices, and even suggest destinations based on what it knows about your interests. Wow. All while you're still chatting. That's impressive. Yeah. It really is like having a super efficient travel agent who can instantly process tons of information and make things happen. Right. But we've heard about AI that can understand language and even generate images before. Right. What makes Gemini 2.0 so different? Well, you touched on something important, earlier images. Oh, yeah. Gemini 2.0 isn't just text-based. It's what's called multimodal. Sure. This means it can understand and generate not only text, but also images and even speech. Hmm. With the new version, they've released Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. And it can basically do it all, generate images from your descriptions, mm. seek to you, search the web, even write code. Wait, so you're telling me I could just describe an image I need for my blog post and... Gemini 2.0 would create it for me. That's the idea. That's mind-blowing. No more endless scrolling through stock photo sites. It's really blurring the lines between all these different forms of communication. Okay. We're moving away from separate inputs and outputs uh -huh. and towards a more natural way for humans and AI to interact. Okay. So it all sounds amazing in theory. Sure. But how do we know it actually works? Mm -hmm. Are we just taking Google DeepMind's word for it? That's a great question, and you're right to be skeptical. The good news is that Google DeepMind has published a ton of benchmark data, which are basically like standardized tests for AI, Okay. and the results are pretty impressive. They put Gemini 2.0 through the ringer on tasks like understanding general knowledge, right. coding math, and even visual understanding, mm -hmm. and it consistently outperformed previous AI models. So walk me through some of the specifics. Give me the highlights of how Gemini 2.0 stacks up against the competition. I want to see the receipts. All right, let's start with MMLU Pro, which is a massive test of general knowledge across 57 different subjects. Okay. Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental scored a whopping 76.4%. Wow. Which is a significant jump over previous models. Okay. Basically, it's like having an AI that can hold its own in a trivia night on just about any topic you throw at it. Okay, that's impressive. But I'm also curious about the coding aspect. You mentioned it could write code. Yeah. How good is it really? Could it actually help a real developer? That's where the natural to code benchmark comes in. This test evaluates how well AI can generate code in different programming languages. Right. And Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental aced it, scoring a remarkable 92.9%. Wow. That means it can write high quality code in popular languages like Python, Java, and C++ with very few errors. So it's not just a toy for hobbyists. No. It could actually be a useful tool for professional developers. Absolutely. Imagine having an AI assistant that could understand your coding intentions, generate accurate code snippets, and even help you debug your code. Yeah. It could significantly speed up the development process and potentially even open up coding to people who don't have extensive programming knowledge. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. We've talked about it understanding language. Yeah. Generating images. Right. And even writing code. Uh-huh. It sounds like Gemini 2.0 is basically an AI overachiever acing every test thrown its way. That's one way to put it. But the real test is how all this translates into real world applications. Okay, you've definitely got my attention. Yeah. Let's unpack how this impressive technology is actually being used. And that's where the real excitement lies. 
do DeepMind isn't just talking about the potential of Gemini 2.0. Right. They're already putting it to work in a variety of research projects. All right, spill the beans. <laughs> kind of projects are we talking about here? Yeah. I'm ready for some real world examples. <laughs> well, they've got a few different projects underway, each exploring unique applications of this technology. There's Project Astra, which is all about creating a truly universal AI assistant. Um, Project Mariner, which is focused on reimagining the web browser as a personalized AI experience. Uh -huh. And they're even developing agents specifically for developers and the world of gaming. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Let's start with Project Astra. What makes this universal AI assistant so special? What can it do that other AI assistants can't? Well, Project Astra is pushing the boundaries of what we typically think of as an AI assistant. Imagine an AI that can not only understand your spoken commands, right. but also interpret visual cues, reason about complex situations, and even interact with the physical world in a meaningful way. Okay, that's definitely next level stuff. Yeah. But what does that actually look like in practice? Can you give me a concrete example of how Astra could be used? Sure. Let's say you have a visually impaired individual trying to navigate a busy street. Okay. An Astra powered AI assistant could provide audio guidance, of course. But it could also analyze real-time video from a camera identifying obstacles or reading street signs, even recognizing familiar faces. Right. It's like giving someone a whole new level of independence and awareness. Wow, that's a powerful example. It really highlights the potential of Astra to make a real difference in people's lives. Yeah. But you also mentioned applications in medicine. How could Astra be used in a setting like a hospital? Well, imagine a surgeon in the operating room assisted by Astra. The AI could analyze medical images in real time, Okay. cross-reference those images with a vast medical database, Right. and even anticipate the surgeon's next move, preparing instruments or offering guidance based on its analysis. It's like having an incredibly knowledgeable and skilled assistant right there in the operating room, exactly. ready to lend a hand at a moment's notice. Right. That could potentially revolutionize surgery as we know it. And it's not just limited to highly specialized fields like medicine. Imagine an astro-powered assistant helping you organize your home, manage your finances, or even plan your meals, learning your preferences over time and anticipating your needs before you even have to ask. Okay, now you're making me want an astro-powered AI assistant in my life right now. It sounds incredibly helpful. But let's move on to Project Mariner. You mentioned it's all about reinventing the web browser. Mm -hmm. How does that tie into the whole agentic AI concept? Well, think about how we use web browsers today. We type in search queries, scroll through endless pages of results, and often get bogged down in information overload. Project Mariner wants to change all that by transforming the browser into an active AI agent, oh. working on your behalf to find exactly what you need and streamline your entire online experience. So instead of just being a passive tool for accessing information, mm -hmm. the browser itself would become an intelligent assistant anticipating my needs, and proactively searching for relevant information. Exactly. It could summarize lengthy articles, extract key insights from research papers, compare products across different websites, hmm. even generate content based on your specific requests. Wow. It's all about making the web work for you, not the other way around. That sounds like a dream come true for anyone who spends a lot of time online, whether it's for work research or just staying informed. No more endless scrolling and sifting through irrelevant information. But can you give me a more concrete example of how Mariner might work in a real world scenario? Sure. Let's say you're working on a research paper and okay. need to gather information on a specific topic. Instead of manually searching through dozens of websites and articles, right. you could simply tell Mariner what you're looking for. Okay. It would then scan the web, identify relevant sources, summarize the key findings, mm -hmm. and even organize the information into a format that's easy to understand and use. It's like having a personal research assistant who can instantly sift through mountains of information and deliver precisely what you need. That could be a game changer for students, researchers, and really anyone who relies on the internet for information. But you also mentioned developer and gaming agents. What's happening in those areas? Um, these are really interesting areas where Google DeepMind is exploring more specialized applications of Gemini 2.0. Take the developer agent, for example. Oh. They're calling it Jules. Jules. And it's designed to assist developers in writing every code faster. So instead of just suggesting code completions, Jules is more like an AI pair programmer, actually understanding the context of the code and offering more intelligent suggestions. That's the idea. Jules can help you debug code, identify potential errors before they become problems refactor your code to make it more efficient and readable, and even generate new code snippets based on your instructions. Right. It's like having an experienced developer looking over your shoulder, offering guidance and helping you improve your skills. 
That could be a huge time saver for developers, especially when they're working on complex projects. It could also potentially help less experienced programmers learn faster and produce better code. But what about the gaming agents? Are we talking about AI that can beat human players at video games? You know, it's not just about beating humans. It's about using games as a challenging and dynamic environment to further develop and test AI capabilities. Okay. Games require AI to strategize, make decisions in real time, adapt to unexpected situations, and even learn from their mistakes. So it's like a training ground for AI where they can hone their skills in a complex virtual world right. before applying those skills to real world challenges. Exactly. And the insights gained from developing gaming agents can be applied to a wide range of fields from robotics and automation to self-driving cars and even financial modeling. That makes a lot of sense. Work. And aside from the practical applications, there's also something fascinating about the idea of AI learning to play games. Mm -hmm. It blurs the lines between human and artificial intelligence in a really intriguing way. It definitely does. And it raises all sorts of philosophical questions about the nature of intelligence, creativity, and even consciousness. But beyond all that, there's also the potential for AI to enhance the gaming experience for humans. Okay, I'm curious. How could AI actually make games more enjoyable for human players? Imagine AI agents that act as virtual companions or guides within the game, offering assistance when you need it, huh. providing a greater challenge when you're ready for it, and even tailoring the gameplay to your individual preferences and skill level. Right. It could make games more immersive, engaging, and personalized than ever before. That sounds amazing. It's like having a customized gaming experience that adapts to your individual play style and keeps you constantly challenged and entertained. Exactly. And it could open up whole new genres of games that are more interactive, dynamic, and responsive to the player's actions. It's a really exciting area of exploration. This whole deep dive has been incredibly eye-opening. We've gone from the basic capabilities of Gemini 2.0 to these really ambitious research projects that are pushing the boundaries of what AI can do. It's definitely a rapidly evolving field, and it seems like every day there's a new breakthrough or discovery. Yeah. But with all this potential, I think it's also important to step back and consider the broader implications of this technology. What does it mean for the future of work, creativity, and even human interaction? That's a really important point. Mm. We've been focused on the exciting possibilities, Yeah. but it's crucial to consider the potential challenges as well. It really does feel like we're at a turning point, you know, and how we interact with technology. Yeah. It's not just about tools anymore. Right. It's about developing this partnership with AI. It is a pivotal moment. And as you said, it comes with both tremendous potential and important things to think about. Um, one question that keeps coming up for me is how AI development will shape the way AI actually thinks or okay. processes information, I should say. Could we end up with AI agents that have distinct personalities or unique problem solving styles? That's a fascinating question. It's like, the line between human intelligence and artificial intelligence could start to get really blurry. Mm -hmm. What happens when AI goes beyond just mimicking human thought patterns? Yeah. And it's just developing its own unique ways of understanding the world. It really challenges our definition of intelligence, doesn't it? Yeah. And it takes us into some pretty deep philosophical territory about consciousness, creativity, and what it means to be intelligent in the first place. Right. But even if we set those big questions aside for a moment, there are still some very real and exciting implications for how AI could impact human creativity. That's something I'm really curious about. We've talked about AI generating text and images, right? but could it actually go beyond that and become a true creative partner for humans? Absolutely. Imagine AI agents that can brainstorm alongside you, exploring new concepts, helping you break through creative blocks, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible in fields like art, music, design, and writing. It's like having an AI muse that can spark your imagination and take your ideas in directions you might never have considered on your own. I love that an AI muse, it really captures the potential for AI to not just replicate human creativity, but to amplify it and take yeah. it to a whole new level. Could we see a whole new wave of artistic expression driven by this kind of collaboration between humans and AI? I think that's definitely within the realm of possibility. And it's not just about creating completely new works of art. AI could also help us re-examine and reimagine existing creative works, oh, okay. uncovering hidden patterns, exploring alternative interpretations, and even restoring damaged pieces. So it's like having an AI art historian, curator, and restorer 
all rolled into one, helping us to better appreciate and understand our cultural heritage. Yeah. But what about the individual creative process? Right. Could AI play a role in helping people express themselves in more personal and meaningful ways? Absolutely. Wow. Oh. Imagine AI agents that can learn your individual artistic preferences, your style, your influences. They could then help you curate content, recommend tools and techniques, and even co-create with you tailoring the entire creative process to your unique vision. Right. It's like having a personalized creative coach who's always there to support and inspire you. This has been an amazing journey through the world of Gemini 2.0 and the agentic era. Yeah. We started by unpacking what makes this technology so unique. Yeah. Its ability to understand, generate, and act across different modes of communication. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we explored some of the truly groundbreaking research projects that are already underway. But you've also emphasized the importance of considering the bigger picture, yeah. the potential impact of this technology on society as a whole. So as we wrap up our deep dive, okay. what are the key takeaways you'd like to leave our listener with? Well, I think the most important takeaway is that we're entering a new era of human-computer interaction. We're moving beyond the idea of AI as a simple tool and towards a future where AI becomes a partner, a collaborator, and maybe even a catalyst for expanding our understanding of intelligence and creativity itself. Right. It's a future filled with immense potential, but also with challenges that we need to approach thoughtfully and ethically. You've given us a lot to think about today, mm -hmm. and I'm sure our listener is just as excited about the possibilities and maybe a little apprehensive about the unknowns as we are. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who's just starting to explore the world of AI yeah. and wants to learn more? I'd say the most important thing is to stay curious and engaged. The field is evolving so rapidly that it's mm -hmm. essential to keep learning, keep asking questions, and keep exploring. And remember, this isn't just about technology. It's about what we as humans want to do with this technology. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself what excites you most about the potential of Gemini 2.0 and the agentic era, right. and what concerns you most. Right. Those are the questions that will guide us as we navigate this uncharted territory together. This deep dive has been just a glimpse into the fascinating world of agentic AI and there's so much more to discover. Yeah. We hope this conversation has sparked your curiosity and given you a better understanding of what's on the horizon. We're just at the beginning of this journey, and it's going to be an incredible ride. Keep exploring, keep learning, and let's see what the future holds. 